Okay, Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, verse 18. And Zechariah said unto the angel, Whereby shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife well stricken in years. And you can get the references back to the audio and the, and the videos that we've done. We're going to just pick up where we left off. The angel. Only God would allow. It's the only one God would allow besides the Levite priest. And we went over that. We've gone over it. Make sure you know it. Again, go back to the videos and the audios that you can find. I made sure I wanted you to know that there would be on a shadow of doubt that this person that shows up with Zacharias was no other but sent by God an angel. There were plagues upon men who walked in the holy place. There was death upon men who touched the ark. There was no reason why Zacharias should have feared this person showing up, the angel. Only Aaron and his sons were to be present in the holy place. And look at back chapter 1, verse 8. We go back to the audio. We discussed that in verse 1 and 8. Zacharias had Old Testament scriptures. He was a Levite. He, he was a priest. He had a certain order. Now Genesis 12 verse 1. Genesis 12 1. We're still in the Old Testament in Luke 1. Genesis 12, 1 through 4. Now the Lord has said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, from thy kindred, from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. I will make of thee a great nation, Israel. I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and will curse them that curse thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed, that be the Lord Jesus Christ. So Abram departed as the Lord had spoken unto him, and Lot went with him. Abraham was seventy and five years old when he departed out of Aram. That's an old man. That's a very old man. Zechariah says, I'm an old man. We're going to go over this again. Because you need to get this. This should have not been nothing new to Zacharias. Because we're going to see when, when the angel shows up to Mary, there's two different events going on. Abraham is 75 years old. That is old. Chapter 12, verse 7. And the Lord appeared unto Abraham and said unto thy seed, Will I give this land? And there built he an altar in the Lord who appeared unto him. The seed. He's going to have a seed. That's a child. Seventy-five years old. Do you know what we are reading? They had, Zacharias had to read from the scrolls. And he had access to those scrolls. Where your common Jewish person would not have. Seventy-five years old, and he's going to have a seed. We need to get this. I know I done it last time, and we're going to do it again. Repetition. You know, we're reading today Matthew as a family. Do you realize how many times it is mentioned about the two? Ships on the storm with Jesus and the apostles. You know that's going to be important if it's mentioned. I, I don't know. It's mentioned more than more than twice in the Gospels, both of them. It's mentioned in Matthew and it's mentioned at least in John. We read about this guy who who is who is old and has a child. It's important. 
chapter 13, verse 14. If you don't get anything out of this, get the fact is that you get the fact that Abraham is an old man who has a child. Okay, you get it. Zacharias didn't. This is common knowledge. John the Baptist will come up and, and speak to the Pharisees. Hey, don't you say that you're a, of Abraham because I'm able to raise these rocks up. And they tell Jesus that, well, we're of Abraham. It says in verse 14, The Lord said unto Abraham, after Lot was separated from him, Lift up now thy eyes and look from the place where thou art northward and southward and eastward and westward. For all the land which thou seest to thee will I give it, and to thy seed forever. That's a promise. To his seed. 15.2 And these things the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield, thy exceedingly great reward. And Abram said, Lord God, what wilt thou give me? Seeing I go childless, and the steward, and the steward of my house is Eliezer of Damascus. We'll jump down uh, to verse four, and behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, "This shall not be thy heir, Eliezer, but he that shall come forth out of thy bowels shall be thy heir." And he brought him forth aboard and said, Look now toward the heaven and tell the stars, if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, So shall thy seed be. You haven't even had one child, old man. But count those stars and that's how many grandchildren you're going to have. Huh? Don't you think Abraham's in there scratching his head like, What on earth, Lord, are you talking about? Verse 13, he said unto Abram, Know of surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in the land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them 400 years. That's Exodus. We know that. Huh? What? 16.1. Now Sarai, Abraham's wife, bear him no children. She's old too. She's childless. But we keep reading that he's going to give him a child. Something not right there. And we want, let's see, verse 16. And, Abraham, and Abram was fourscore and six years old when Hagar built when Hagar bare Ishmael to him. 86 years old, he has a child by proxy for this woman. You're Ishmaelites. We keep going to war with them. All right, 86 years old, and he has a child, but not the right child. Verse seven, uh, Chapter 17, verse 1. And when Abram was 99, when Abram was 90 years old and 9, 13 years between 16.16 and 17.1. 13 years God gave silence to Abram. That's kind of remarkable. Verse 16. We'll start in verse 15. 17.15. And God said unto Abram, As for Sarai thy wife, thou shalt not call her name Sarai, but Sarah shall her name be. So you can't reference Abram and Sarai anything with Ishmael because God changed their name now. Ishmael is not of Abram. Him. He's of Abram. Get that. I will bless her and give thee a son also of her. Here we go again. Yea, I will bless her, and she shall be a mother of nations. Kings of people shall be of her. Now ready. Ready. Then Abram fell on his face and laughed, and said to said in his heart, not to God, he didn't have 
Shall a child be born unto him that's a hundred years old? That would be nine months after. So Abraham would be a hundred years old. He's 99 now. So nine months would run over into the next year. And shall Sarah that is 90 years old bear a son? A hundred year old man and a ninety year old woman bearing children. That sounds kinda eighteen nine. And they said unto him, Where is Sarah thy wife? And he said, Behold in the tent. He said, I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life. Now, when you read Romans 4, 19 and Hebrews 11, 11, 12, the Bible says that her womb, her time was dead. Can you imagine Sarah, the first mother? I don't want to be cruel here, but let me be right. Sarah is 90 years old, and one day she has her period again. Don't you think that brought some fear? <clears throat> I don't know about when a girl reaches reaches puberty that first time if she's fearful. But all of a sudden here comes her menstrual cycle again, and then when when she's clean, Abraham and Sarah, a hundred a ninety year old man and a and a seventy nine year old wife, have intercourse and produce a child. And Hebrews eleven, eleven and twelve says God had to give her the strength to push that baby out. Without having to have her have hip surgery. And I'm not being critical. I'm not being funny. I'm being serious. God had to straighten her pelvic bone. So Sarah laughs at the Lord. And he says, okay, fine. You're going to name that boy Isaac. Which means laughter. You know that? Now... Chapter 21, verse 1. And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said what we just read. And the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. She conceived and bare Abraham a son in his old age, a hundred years old, her being ninety, at the set time of which God had spoken to him. And Abraham called his son that was born unto him, whom Sarah bare to him, Isaac. In verse 5, Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born unto him. And Sarah said, God had made me to laugh so that all that here will laugh. I can you just imagine her laughing during the pregnancy? <laughs> this is You do understand that a 100-year-old man and a 90-year-old woman had a baby. You understand that by scriptures, what we just read? You know that, right? We just read it in Genesis. The Holy Spirit recorded it for us, right? Go back to Luke chapter 1, verse 18. Look what he says. Now, the angel just told him you're going to have a baby. You think, all right, great, amen, glory to God. Let's get the nursery all set up and all that. Little camels and locusts. I mean, if you know what I'm talking about. You, you see in John the Baptist's little jar of baby food, locusts? <laughs> Zachariah said unto the angel, Whereby shall I know this? I'm going to have a baby. I am an old man. And my wife is well stricken with eight, with years. What did we just read about? He is following the footsteps of Abraham and Sarah. Had he said, you know, this sounds like, at least he would say, this sounds like a story I've heard before. The main angel said, um, you want to try to father the nation? Yeah, Abraham and Sarah. Okay. Mr. Angel, well, what's your name? Gabriel? I believe you. 
What's going on here? Oh, and one of the angels would have had a great time say, oh, let me tell you what's going to happen. The Messiah is going to be born, and your child is going to lead him all. And No, but the guy has doubt. No one is supposed to be in the holy place. Only the priest. Here an angel shows up. He said, I am sent by God. God has heard your prayer. He has answered your prayer. You're going to have a baby. Huh? What do you mean? How can that be? Do you see the spiritual condition of Israel? They, they doubted God. It's the time of prayer. They're lighting the incense. People are outside praying. Your prayer has been answered. Mm -hmm. What do you mean? The child conceived in an old age was nothing new. As a matter of fact, it is the very foundation of the Jews. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. That child born of elderly, old people, parents, is their foundation. It was the miracle sign. Do you know what the next miracle sign is going to show up about a birth? How about a woman having a baby without no man involved at all? All right. Do you know when the angel, this very angel, I'll give you what happened. You know when this angel speaks to Mary and says, you're going to have a baby without no man. You know, she's like, really? Look at verse 34, chapter 1. Then Mary said unto him, how shall this be, seeing I know not a man? Now, why is she able to question? Because it's never happened. Verse 18, old man and wife, well stricken age. That's in, that's in Genesis. That's the history of Jews. But a woman giving birth to a baby without no man intercession? It says, And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest and overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Look at verse 38. And Mary said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be unto me according to... She believed the angel, even something was completely impossible. Zacharias is going to have something happen to him that already happened to the Jews. Mary had more faith in God than Zacharias did. Now, the angel had to explain to Mary, you know, let me show you. There's reason why, because it never happened. Why does an angel need to explain it in the holy place to a priest that a prayer he's had, how did the angel know about it, that God has answered his prayer, a very foundation of the Jews, and doubt? That is why. Zacharias is smitten with dumbness and nothing happens to Mary but blessings. Now I hope you got that. I hope you went back to the, the audios and the videos, especially in chapter 1, verse 8. That, that's why I brought all this to show you Zacharias should have known what was going on. At least have enough sense to say, I've heard this before. And he doesn't. Verse 19. Hey, we're actually moving on to another verse today. And the angel answered him, answering said unto him, I am Gabriel, that stand in the presence of God, and am sent to speak unto thee, and to show thee these great glad tidings. He's Gabriel. And nowhere in the Bible does it say Gabriel is an archangel. He says he's Gabriel, and he stands in the presence of God. The only archangel named in the Bible is Michael. Now, you will find Gabriel in Daniel 8, 16, 9, 21, Luke, 11, uh, Luke 1, 11, and 26 to 38. We'll read about Gabriel again. He visits Daniel, Zacharias, and Mary. He says, I stand in the presence of God. 
So God on his throne, except for the times he goes to Daniel, and he goes to Zacharias, and he goes to Mary, God sees Gabriel there. He's in God's presence. Now, why don't you think that Zacharias, he's standing in the presence of God. Tell me about God. What's it like? Do you have any questions? And like to Daniel, there's a message to understand. Something's going to happen. Let me explain it to you. Daniel had visions, and Gabriel showed him the visions. God said the gospel, which is glad tidings. That's what gospel means. To an old man, to an old woman, you're going to give birth to a child. And this child is no ordinary child. According to Jesus, this is the greatest man that has ever been born of a woman. This child, if Israel would have received Christ as, as their Messiah, would somehow transform. Transformers, change before your eyes. You know, the werewolf. And he's back to man. I wish Hollywood would get out of the Bible. This man would have changed into Elijah. You know, John the Baptist did something that Elijah did. He kept going up to the king and pointing the king in his face and, you know, he was sinning. So, now, verse 20. We're moving on to another verse. We're moving on. And behold, now, and to show thee glad tidings. Now, can't you just see Zachariah's face is smiling? All right, yes. Yeah, he's got glad tidings. And behold, yes, now come on, tell me more. Thou shalt be dumb. Mm -hmm. Not that kind of dumb. Not able to speak. <laughs> yeah, can you just picture Zachariah? Thou shalt be done. Mm -hmm. No, not that kind. You're not going to be able to speak. Until the day that these things shall be performed. Again, let me stress, we are in the holy place. This is no ordinary event. There should have been no doubt. Zachariah should have walked out of that, that holy place with all the people there. The Messiah is coming! My son is going to be born! And he's going to prepare the way as Isaiah says! But you had doubt, so he comes out of there. He's unable to speak. He can't proclaim the gospel to glad tidings. How about that? Oh, Christians would love to be Zachariah. Oh, I know the glad tidings, but I can't tell anybody because I can't speak. You know what this guy does as soon as he starts talking? He starts praising the Lord and, and telling what this child is going to do. You do know that, right? He says in verse 20, Not able to speak until the day that these things shall be performed. So it's more than nine months. Because he's got to go home. Him and his wife have got to come together to produce a child. Abraham and Sarah laughed, but they still believed God. It was just a funny story. This guy. Now, Abraham and Sarah, how many babies were born to 99-year-old men? None. Like Mary, to them it was something new. It was funny, but it was something new. To this guy who's already had it happen in Genesis. So don't you see when you have the Bible in your hand and you can read it if you do or if you don't, 
Can you see what God's going to do to you when you realize the things that you should know and you're going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ and some of you Christians are going to be dumb. I mean unable to speak because of your doubt. And you can't say, well, I never read the Bible because you could have. You have a first grade English reading ability with spelling. You have a dictionary. You can have it read to you. You are without an excuse. Because thou believest not my words. Look at that. Not God's words. My words. You imagine all the angels in heaven. Look what Gabriel did. And God's just there shaking his head. Well, that guy should have known. Even though God has foreknowledge. Because thou believest not my words, which shall be fulfilled in their season. Time of life. Guess whose womb is going to be made refreshed now? Now we're not even told how old these couples are. So, dumb in the Bible is unable to speak. Until the baby is born and circumcised and named, so it's nine months and eight days plus. The child was named and circumcised on the eighth day after birth. Abraham and Sarah laughed. Zacharias doubted. Gabriel was no mere man. He was an angel with a message from God, and he has powers to make you dumb. So, we'll leave it like that. We'll pick up in the next scene. We're going to be walking out of the holy place next time, Lord willing.